welcome to a new episode of the Woolen Twine Fiber Studio Knitting Podcast. My name is Jule and I'm the dyer and maker behind Woolen Twine Fiber Studio, which is a small creative space located here in northern Germany, where I play with botanical dyes and natural yarns. Um, yeah, welcome and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. Um, I feel like a broken record saying this every time, but it's been a while that I've recorded a video and uh, I actually wanted to uh, kind of squeeze in another knitting episode over the past couple of weeks but yeah life happened and for some reason it was so crazy busy that I was kind of lacking time to record another episode yeah so anyhow I'm, I'm, I'm rambling already but I wanted to say that I'm sorry that I didn't um, uh, record another knit knitting episode recently um, but I'm back with another yarn collection that I want to preview to you in this video today. Um, and this one is really, really special because I don't know how it is where you live, but um, I'm finally feeling autumn in the air and there's nothing that can make me this happy, like weather related, <laughs> um, than when I see leaves turning and my favorite season to start because autumn is by far my favorite, favorite season. Um, and yeah, I think I got a lot of inspiration over the past couple of weeks for autumnal projects and I don't know, somehow it really clicked um, when the first kind of coolish days, not coolish, but not 30, 25 degrees anymore happened. I felt such an such a rush of inspiration and yeah, it actually led to a really autumnal palette that I have been dying over the past couple of weeks. So in this video, I want to showcase everything that uh, I've been working on over the past weeks and also some new yarns that we have in the making. This is exciting because I feel I have not had a new yarn base in quite a while. And this one has been in the making for a while. And also for those of you who've been sticking around for a little bit longer, um, some of the fiber contents might be familiar. So um, I'm really excited to show it to you. And I kind of decided to have this collection a little bit off. A special because a lot of things are happening around the end of the year with specials and such uh, in the fiber community I feel whereas for me the beginning of autumn is even more magical timing time wise and inspires me even more so I kind of thought it would be nice to have some specials in autumn or like the beginning of fall um, already so yeah, without further ado, I guess let me start giving you a bit of an overview of uh, what I've prepared over the past couple of weeks. So for the September launch collection, a little recap on how this works. I usually work on uh, new yarns for a couple of weeks and then release them um, on a certain date, which is the shop update date for the month. And then uh, everything that I'm showing to you now will be available in that update um, which will be next Friday the 27th of September 8 p.m. CET which is the Central European time zone um, and I will kind of showcase everything now and tell you all the details and then you can purchase everything next Friday. Um, we have some new bases and let me start with them because some of it is a bit a bit more familiar maybe if you've been sticking around for a while and some is kind of new so we will have pretty much just one base that we are restocking in two weights then we'll have a limited edition in two weights and then we have a little special all around kits and the knit along so it's really worth to say to the end i will make sure to put some timestamps down below so you can actually jump to the section that's interesting for you so if you're not really interested in the collection but rather want to hear about the knit along, feel free to jump to that section. I will um, timestamp everything down below. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let me reach for the new, kind of new-ish base. Because if you've been around for a while, you might be familiar with a base that we initially launched, I believe, in 2021 for the first time, um, which is our Shetland Romney base, um, a 50-50 blend of Shetland fibers and Romney fibers. And 
Um, that one was only available in this uh, shape, which is a four ply or a fingering weight version of 350 meters per 100 grams. And for the new collection, we decided, uh, or not the new collection, in general, we decided to have this in a DK for the first time. So this is the new base that is launching. It is Shetland Romney DK, um, which is now a 230 meters per 100 grams, so slightly heavier DK weight base um, in comparison to our other bases. And it comes um, in this beautiful oatmeal color that I designed um, by blending the Ecru uh, Romney fibers in this blend and some of the Shetland fibers that are just simply um, available in a lot of, not available, that sounds bad, but uh, Shetland sheep um, happen to have a lot of different natural colors and so you have um, I don't know, you have brownish, fawn colored, murid colored, and a lot of like different shades of Shetland sheep. And so uh, I blended some colors to achieve this beautiful oatmeal kind of shade. And I could not be happier with how this turned out. I don't know how visible it is on camera, but it has such depth in the different heather, like parts of the yarn. And there's so many different shades. I don't know how visible it actually is, but yeah, it looks beautiful and I could not be happier with how this turned out. So yeah, we're premiering Shetland Romney DK for the first time. And if I quote my mom, who also knits a lot of uh, samples for uh, my shop, she says that this might actually be her favorite fiber blend that we carry. Um, so the Shetland Romney has a very special feel. If you're not familiar with it or have not tried it um, when we had the four ply version before, it's kind of the perfect missing link between soft and rustic and it has this woolly character without being like too scratchy. It doesn't have a lot of um, hairs sticking out. I don't know if that's visible. But for me, um, maybe I should put a little disclaimer <laughs> again that softness is something incredibly individual and what I experience as soft might not be for you. So keep in mind that this is very individual and, um, you know, it might apply to you or not. Yeah, and I think for me, it's kind of also because it's very bouncy and also lofty despite being a worsted spun yarn. I kind of feel this is uh, still relatively bouncy and not like a woolen spun, but still has a lot of give and also blooms a lot when you knit with it and you block it. It generally tends to be super even when you knit it up. Let me try to um, show you a swatch so you can see better maybe. So to give you a bit of an idea, um, we prepared some swatches. So this one is the Shetland Romney 4-ply in the new color. So I also wanted to show how even it turns out to be. And it's a bit more on the heavier fingering weight side, I would say. So I think the perfect needle size for this one, if you have a relatively standard tension, then is a 3.5 um, for more of a drapey fabric. But you could also totally knit it up in an even tighter gauge, I believe. So I think that three to three and a half would be the sweet spot for me. So it's kind of almost a sport weight, if you want to call it like that, um, which I think makes it very versatile because depending on what you want to do, you can do a lot of different things with it, um, depending on if you wanted a tighter or more loose gauge because both works quite well. Like it fills in the gaps um, when you knit it on a slightly more loose gauge. Um, but yeah, it's still uh, f totally fine with how it's, because it has a relatively loose ply. I don't know if that's visible, but in the fingering weight, it's a two ply and it's relatively loose. So you can still knit it on a tighter gauge, I feel. So I also totally see this one for shawls. Um, and then we have the Shetland Romney DK, and this is how it looks on 4.5 millimeter needles, so it's also slightly heavier than 
our other DK weight bases, which I would usually knit on a 375 to 4 at the most. Um, I'm uh, telling these in European millimeter sizes, by the way, so I'm sorry I'm not really good at US sizing for the needles, but um, I might also include uh, some info about how many stitches per 10 centimeters. This is 20 stitches per 10 centimeters, both on 4 and 4.5 millimeter needles. It kind of, you know, it's it turned out the same gauge, but the fabric is a bit more loose on the 4.5 millimeter needle. And you can see how it's like very bouncy and holding its shape super well. If I just pull and let loose, it really pulls back into shape. So a really versatile workhorse type of yarn, I would say, suitable for both garments and accessories alike. And actually, despite being a worsted spun, also very, very suitable for color work. Um, I'm going to show some swatches uh, later of color work with another base <laughs> that we're restocking. But just to give you an idea and a little intro of our Shetland Romney base. So this is the debut of the DK weight version. And it actually might be easily becoming one of our favorites. Um, at least here for the team. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the new undyed colorway that is called Oatmeal. We had a colorway that was called Oatmeal before, but that was a bit lighter, and I think this one is even more fitting. And anyways, with every shearing and every spin, it's going to change anyways, because sheep are not re like reproducible every time, and the fleece colors, they just change from shearing to shearing. So... We're going to embrace the fact that this is kind of always a little bit limited. Um, but this is the color and I'm so in love. But yeah, so this has been exclusively spun for us. So it's only available through wool and twine. And the DK weight version I should maybe also show is a three ply. So it's a bit more round than... Can I show them side by side somehow? Um, it's a bit more round, this, the DK, this one, um, than the four ply version, um, and a bit denser, I would say, because it has three plies and not only two, so. But yeah, so far about this, I have an old video about the initial launch of Shetland Romney and I'm going to link that down below uh, in case you need a little bit more info about the making process and all that, although I should probably update it all. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to link that down below uh, in case you're interested um, about that base and how we first initially launched. The video might be a bit grubby and not the best, but you know, it's a while ago and you can only learn. But yeah, Shetland Romney will be one of the only bases that we are launching and the only dyed base for this um, shop update because we also have another undyed base that is only available in its undyed state um, that I'm going to show to you a little bit later. But first of all, let me share the colorways on Shetland Romney with you. So we dyed a full rainbow on the Shetland Romney base and I'm going to show them to you in the four ply weight version. However, they are available in both weights. Each shade is available in the four ply with the 350 meters per 100 grams and the DK weight version that has 230 meters per 100 grams. And by the way, I have also curated two little lists of um, pattern suggestions that I have also linked down below. Um, on what you can knit with this, um, just in case you need a little bit of inspiration um, for this base. And also, last info for now, I'm going to show you the colorways for sure, but the last info is that this is the only update we have this base in for this year, because um, we need to get another respin, and we actually went in and had a lot of colorways dyed for this launch, so... Um, as long as it lasts, this is the only stock we have for now. So we're going to um, get it respun. It's not a limited edition in that sense, but um, you know, sometimes you have to kind of 
be mindful, at least I have to be mindful as someone in an urban environment, um, of how much yarn I can actually order because I have limited storage space. I have two big storage cellars that are currently full to the brim with yarn as the season is approaching. And so I kind of, sometimes I cannot buy huge amounts of each space because it's just not doable to store all of that. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, this, this is why we have only one restock of this, um, of this base for this year, but it's coming back next year for sure. But yeah, for now, this is the only chance to get this yarn. But without further ado, let me start sharing it. <laughs> so kind of, let me start with maybe the more autumnal shades, because this is what I got really inspired about. And with the lighter shades, this one is called Sand and it's a light beige that has a bit more color than, let me show it side by side, a bit more warmish color than the original undyed oatmeal shade has. It looks almost gray on camera, the uh, oatmeal, but yeah. This is how it looks and Sand is a bit more warm beigey which I find sometimes this is actually crucial when you want to knit a certain type of color work with a certain vibe and with all the warm autumnal shades, I kind of wanted to include another neutral in case someone wanted to do a color work. But yeah, side by side, this is the difference and this one is sand. Then next up we have fawn, which is a light beigey orange, I would say, like a rusty kind of orangey tone. Also very nice as a base for color work, I feel. Next up we have one of my favorites, maybe already. <laughs> we have pumpkin and pumpkin is so good with fawn, I think. I love this combo. In general, this is kind of the perfect rust for me. And we did dye pumpkin before on uh, BFA Romney, but on this base, I think it's even more rich and beautiful. I don't know, I absolutely adore this colorway. I'm having a hard time not keeping some for myself. <laughs> but yeah, these would also be very good together, I think. Um, then next up in the kind of autumnal uh, section, we have Dahlia, which is a beautiful muted red, I would say. Almost like a brick color. Let me try to hold them in family so you can ha see them side by side. So this is Dahlia on the, on the right. Um, and it's this beautiful like brick red kind of shade. I really like this one. I think it's very elegant. So yeah, here we have our little rusty shade family, um, followed by some more like brownish tones. This one is hickory and it's more like a neutral, almost reddish brown. I feel back here the colors look most true to color. It's relatively neutral and I wanted to include this in the collection because I thought it's nice to have them um, if you wanted to do like a mo really like multicolor color work, it's always good to have those neutral shades that would like, kind of connect the other colors. Um, and so yeah, this uh, sand is this is kind of one of the uh, transitional neutrals, if that makes sense. Um, although I think they would also be beautiful on their own. So yeah, here we have Higgory. Sand, what I already showed you. Another one in the brownish shade family is Auburn, and this is like a reddish, reddish brown. Although I think on camera it looks a bit more red, so it's le less um, eggplant colored. It's more true to color red brown. But yeah, I think this is also beautiful, and I can totally imagine um, a beautiful autumnal sweater in this one. So yeah, this one is Auburn. And then last but not least, we're restocking our kind of all-time favorite Oxalis. 
And this is so nice on this base because the base is a bit more saturated than, um, for example, BFL Romney is in undertones. So it looks even richer on this base. And I'm in love. It almost looks a bit multicolored and, and like it has a lot of depth to it, I believe. So here we have our Oxalis, actually inspired by our little companion that is living in the studio. Um, that's an Oxalis plant, so there's the inspiration for that one. And as you can see from my nail polish, this is the color family I'm really craving right now. So yeah, Oxalis. I can try to also hold up the reddish tones kind of next to each other. So this is Auburn, Oxalis and Dahlia. Just so you have an idea of how they play together. So I think we have three more kind of autumnal shades and then we can transition to the slightly more coolish undertone shades. This is green apple and it kind of reminds me of green apples. <laughs> Um, and I thought it's also very uh, autumn appropriate shade as it kind of reminds me of apple picking. We have close to uh, the city I live in, there is a big um, area where they actually grow a ton of apples and pears and also pumpkins. And actually, um, I think it's one of the main suppliers for whole of Germany for, when it comes to apples and pears. And so I kind of crave a little bit of an apple picking session. I hope we managed to do one this autumn. But yeah, this kind of reminded me of it. Next up, we have like another very autumnal shade, I would say. And this one is called Olive. And it's like a greeny greeny yellow. It looks a bit more yellow on camera than in real life. In real life it has a bit more golden brassy tones, I would say, and a bit more of a greenish undertone. But yeah, this one is olive. And we have another uh, new shade that's called Autumn Leaf, and this is something between a beige, a yellow, and an orange, and I would say in real life, it's almost the perfect kind of mustard shade, but in on the warm spectrum. So not as greenish as olive, but more on the warm spectrum. So if you're on the hunt for like a mustardy green that is relatively warm in undertone, um, it looks a bit more reddish on camera though. Don't know what it is, but the camera tends to pull things a bit more reddish than they are in real life. But let them show, let me show them side by side. So we have green apple, olive, and autumn leaves. So these are kind of the yellowy, greeny shades um, of the collection. And I think they go so well with pretty much all of the reddish undertoned ones. So I think, let me try to hold some more up. Mm, it's not easy. <laughs> um, but if you put like, the families up and you can see like these would all go so well together in like an autumnal color work sweater. So yeah I guess you can see where my inspiration came from. <laughs> um, but without further ado let me also share a couple of shades with you that are less warm in undertone um, but still very pretty I would say. <laughs> so the first one we have here was a hit last time um, when we launched it on BFL Romney and this one is Berry Jam. It's a pinky purple but more on the kind of, it's more purple than pink but kind of a hybrid in between and it's beautiful I think, very elegant as well. So yeah, this one is Berry Gem, and last time you really loved this one on BFL Romney. It's a bit more purplish on undertone on the Shetland Romney, I feel. You can never predict how a colorway turns out on different bases. It's always completely different, but I love how it turned out on this one. So this one's Berry Gem. Next up, 
we have a good old classic in the cold purple family and this one is called amethyst and it is a beautiful cool purple I love this one. I love how it turned out on the um, Shetland Romney base as well. It's a bit more saturated as well. I feel like most shades turned out a touch more saturated actually. It's just lovely, I feel. <laughs> so yeah, this one is Amethyst. And then we have two more shades. This one is Heather and it's our, it's like a hybrid between pink and purple. And it reminds me of the buds in a heather plant. Um, we have heathers in our window of the office here at the studio. And so I just love to look at them. And heather is one of my favorite kind of transitional plants. So this is the shade heather. I'm also going to make sure to show them side by side. And this one is soft rose. And it's like a super light rosy tone. Um, but also with a beige undertone, so it's kind of between a neutral and a rosy tone. So this is soft rose. And last but not least, this one is called Iris. A beautiful kind of purple, pink purple, but less then, for example, berry jam. I'm going to hold them up side by side so you can see. So this one is berry jam in comparison and this one is amethyst. So you can see where the shade sits kind of in between those families. I hope this is helpful at all. But yeah, I feel like sometimes if you show them just side by side, uh, you just don't show one of, after the other, it's not really easy to imagine how they would play together but this is our kind of purple family here now so yeah i guess we're done this is the whole palette on shetland romney and i could not be happier with them because i mean i tried to make them kind of cohesive but it turned out even better than i thought so yeah i'm just absolutely in love with these shades but yeah i guess that is everything about the shetland romney base um as said they will also be available in the dk weight version um so you have all the choices <laughs> and without further ado let me chat you through the next base that we'll have available so the next base that we will well restock kind of is a very very special one um for those of you who have been around here you might find this from like you might know this one and it might be familiar but for those of you who are new here um for the past two years i have launched a very small batch of a very special yarn that i wanted to create for the longest time because my wardrobe is 99 percent black and one percent Beige. <laughs> I'm not a very colorful person, I will admit. Um, but yeah, I, I wear a lot of black clothes and I just love black. I love everything black. And I kind of wanted to make a black yarn, which is very hard with natural dyes because it would require a lot of over dyeing sessions. It would also need some modifiers that can actually be harsh on the fibers so if you just use a smidge too much or leave it too long in the modifying solution it can really make the fibers a little bit brittle and you know kind of lose the handle of the yarn and i also thought that i wanted to make this available to a wider audience than what i would be able to dye in the black and so i went on a hunt and i tried to source black sheep's fleeces that are actually the blackest I could find because I feel a lot of sheep fleeces like the natural black is very brownish and while this one still has a bit of a brown undertone because after all this is not a man-made dyed item it's still a fleece and it's it's rare that a completely pitch black fleece exists so they always have a smidge of a brown undertone but I went ahead and sourced some relatively rare naturally black fleeces and um, released it in a yarn and 
These past two years, it was a crazy experience because a lot of you folks seem to love black as much as I do. And um, the last two times, both batches were sold within minutes, which I'm so grateful for, but I also thought it's not very accessible. So for this time, I, I didn't manage to up the amount significantly because, you know, the fleeces are um, not indefinitely available, but I made two weights and I tried to spread the launches a little bit. Um, but let me let me get into the admin part a little bit later. First of all, let me show it to you. This is Shetland Welsh Mountain and it's available in two weights that actually are spun to the exact same specifications as our Shetland Romney base. So you can actually combine them, which I love. So this is Shetland Welsh Mountain, a natural black uh, yarn, as you can see. But it's a blend of 50% uh, Shetland, black Shetland fleeces, and 50% uh, black Welsh Mountain fleeces, which are the blackest of the black out there. <laughs> and what also was a bit of a challenge when creating this yarn was that a lot of naturally um, black sheep, sheep breeds have more of the coarser wools, so such as like Swordless and Hybridian. They can be a bit, I don't want to say rough, but yeah, it, it might be hard to add such a high percentage of the black um, of these um, breeds to a yarn. So with this blend, I'm so happy because it still is rustic, of course, but it's so nice and relatively soft in handle. And I'm I'm over the moon with the quality of this yarn. It's just wonderful. And as you can see, <laughs> I'm wearing it right now. It's actually just one of my absolute favorite yarns. And I finally managed to make myself a sweater out of it because I've been wanting to do that the last years already. But I kind of didn't want to commit to taking a sweater's quantity out of the stock because it's so limited. But I decided it's also nice for you to see how it looks worn and therefore I knitted a sample this time. Um, I made mine in the DK weight version and as said we have both weights available. One is 350 meters per 100 grams, the other one is 230 meters per 100 grams just as Shetland Romney. And one is a two ply and one is a three ply. It's super hard to see on camera because it's so dark. But it also has a bit of a heather because I, I did mix in a tiny bit of like an anthracite super dark gray. Just to also cool down the tone of the yarn more and cancel out the brownish tones a bit more. But yeah, I decided to call this shade obsidian because it's, you know like an obsidian stone and re reminds me of that and I love it and I, I don't know it feels kind of majestic and you know I just I just like it and um, this is the shade obsidian in the Shetland uh, Welsh Mountain uh, yarn and I guess without further ado let me show you some swatches I'm also going to present my sample a bit further um, in the next section but I wanted to share because I was telling you about the fact that this is very good for color work I pre also prepared some samples of that so first of all because I'm I'm wearing the DK weight version so you can kind of see how it knits up in the sweater um, so this is one thing and then we also have swatches in the four ply version where you can see that it's also very nice and bouncy and fluffy and just wonderful. I don't know what it is, but for some reason the fabric is just so squishy and bouncy. I suppose it comes from the Shetland because I do have a similar handle in the Shetland Romney. It's still different, but you know, the bounciness is kind of similar. So I figure it's the Shetland probably. But for some reason, these kind of rules never apply to everything because in another blend, the fiber behaves completely different. So it also always depends on the blend. Um, but yeah, this is the swatch um, on its own. And then we have some Colorwork swatches. One of them being the Shetland Welsh Mountain together with the undyed 
um, oatmeal color of Shetland Romney DK. And this is apparently a part of the colorwork yoke of a new pattern coming out soon in this yarn um, by Tanya Bale of the Woolbarrow. And this is the Obsidian Sweater Swatch. And this is actually coming out with uh, the launch of the yarn next week. Um, I'm sure Tanya is going to have some meterage info out before because, you know, she's super talented and super organized and one of my favorite designers. So, um, but yeah, it's a beautiful sweater with a full on, not only color work yoke, but it goes almost down to the hem. And there is a lot of like super beautiful color work elements going on. Um, and the original one is knitted um, with another contrasting color that is apparently a limited edition we used to have called Heritage. And so I wanted to try if it also works and gives a similar effect with Shetland Romney. And it does, it works super well. And here you can also see how beautifully it blends together when you block a color work swatch. Like, Look at how extremely even the color work turns out, despite there being some floats even. So yeah, it looks super beautiful. So yeah, this is the Obsidian Swatch and I would recommend to maybe sign up for our newsletter because newsletter subscribers, they will get a little um, extra. Um, all around the pattern launch next week. So if you haven't signed up yet, I recommend to do so. I will leave the link uh, for the sign up in the description box below. But yeah, there will, will be a special around the Obsidian um, sweater launch. So I can't wait. I literally can't wait and I really have to knit myself another version, though I have to justify for getting another sweaters quantity of this yarn then. So let's see. But I also wanted to show two other swatches from apparently the first launch. Um, so maybe you have seen these before. So this is the Shetland Welsh Mountain in the natural color and then Shetland Romney in the four ply weight version. It's an old color, so it's a bit more grayish in undertone, but yeah, I wanted to show it anyways. And also a little bit of a moody Halloween swatch um that is with a color and that's the good thing about the natural black shade of um the Shetland Welsh Mountain yarn is that it actually has a lot of contrast with pretty much every color so you can go even a bit deeper in the contrasting color because it's so dark <laughs> it will still show up so yeah that's what I said about color work with these uh, two yarn bases that we'll have. I just love them. And next up, I should tell you a bit more about my sample that I'm wearing. This is the Noba sweater by Reta Nitz, if I'm saying this correctly. She's a Finnish knitwear designer and she's extremely talented. She has a very modern kind of urban minimalistic kind of approach um, to her patterns. And I just, I was on the hunt for a really like super nice kind of minimalistic pattern that would also be oversized and, you know, tick a couple of boxes for me. Because I wanted something very wardrobe stapley because that's what I think this yarn is kind of destined to be for me to also knit um, sweaters that you can wear with everything because the color is neutral and elegant and yeah you know everybody needs a very basic minimalistic kind of black sweater in their wardrobe I believe <laughs> and so I wanted to showcase it in exactly this way and that's why I made the Noba um, and I actually followed a principle that uh, Vera Valimäki, um recently mentioned where she said, I think it was in an Instagram post, but it really resonated with me when I read it. And it was, she said, you know, you can have a pattern or a knit as simple as it gets, but pay attention to the tiny details. And that's what makes all the difference. And that's what I absolutely agree with, because even as, if a sweater seems super simple, I look for, you know, some detailings and some 
how some things are finished, for example. Like, I, I know it's not very visible because the yard is also dark, but I love that there is a tubular bind off everywhere. And, you know, these special little details make it very, I don't know, it, it looks very elegant. And even though it's a very simple pattern, I feel like for me, this makes all the difference in, in seeing myself in a very as a successful knitter if that makes sense like I, I i pay attention myself to all of these small details and i just enjoy when a pattern has all of these little things and so i was looking for a pattern that would do exactly that be super simple but have a good construction and you know all of these small things also like uh, short row shaping on this uh, the sleeves even though they are really oversized drop shoulders and all that um and yeah, the Nova sweater finally clicked. It also had the perfect gauge and a really beautiful, very over, like very, very oversized fit. I may, I'll make sure to insert some um, footage of me standing up and showing it a bit more in depth. But you can already see that the shoulder is very, let's not get burned. <laughs> the shoulder is very like dropping down almost to the mid of my um, upper arm. But that was exactly what I was going for, like this type of very oversize-y, but still high neckline kind of um, basic sweaters. And yeah, this one was actually suggested to me by my friend Jenny Ansa of Koti Kotoni, who had to listen to all my whining about finding the perfect pattern for this sample. <laughs> and, so, and then she actually came up with the perfect one. So I will link the pattern down below. Um, the pattern is not on Ravelry, so that's what I will say. Um, but it's available through Reta's website, so you can buy it there. And it's beautifully, simply written, and I really enjoyed it. I made size 4, four I think. Yes, size 4, and that one has 125 centimeters chest circumference finished. I'm a 97 centimeter bust, so that was a lot of positive ease, but that's exactly what I went, wanted to go for, like something very oversized and very boxy. So yeah, that is what I wanted to go for. And because it's very oversized and also the sleeves are very wide, I did use quite some yarn. The only modifications I made is that I uh, did not do a double folded neckline. I did a single neckline and then... Um, knitted that one for five centimeters and did a tubular bind off because I felt the yarn was relatively squishy and the gauge was more on the tighter side and I didn't want to have it too bunched up. So yeah, I went for a single, fold, not a folded neckline, but a single neckline with a tubular bind off for stretchiness. And the other modification I made is that I cropped the sweater by, I think, for five centimeters or something because I'm short and it's still relatively long but I wanted this kind of you know cozy cocoon <laughs> so it's fine for me I could have cropped even more but um, just so you know and I think I used I just broke into my seventh skein so I used over 600 grams of yarn but that's because it's so spacious and I usually have like between four and five hundred grams for my size sweater, but you can see how much fabric that is. So yeah, that's why I used a little bit more. I'll make sure to also add my uh, the exact grams and all that to my Ravelry project page. So you can double check that if you're interested in, um, in the sweater. But yeah, round about 700 grams. I think it was very close to what the pattern called for. So if you want to knit this, you can trust <laughs> the amount that is given in the pattern. So yeah, this is my Noba and I'm absolutely in love. I can totally see myself living in this um, in the colder months, especially when I'm editing videos, which is always when I get really cold <laughs> in the winter. So this is going to be my perfect wardrobe staple. So yeah. And the fabric turned out so nice, I think. It's the perfect, like, it's perfect between drapey and still has a little bit of structure. So, yeah, this is how it looks like. I'll, I hope you'll, uh, you can imagine how it looks like um, if I insert a little bit of footage. 
but yeah, I can only only recommend the pattern. Um, and yeah, this is my sample so far. Uh, feel free to let me know if you have any questions about it. Um, you can uh, always reach me the best via email. So that's hello at woolentwine.com and I'm also going to post it down below because especially in uh, shop update weeks, it can be quite tough to manage to uh, actually answer to all my Instagram messages. So email is the best way. But yeah, so far about my sample, I'm so happy with it. And yeah, it's kind of giving me, especially with the white sleeves, it's giving me like slight 80s vibes. Although I have not even lived in that decade, <laughs> to be really honest, I'm a 90s kid. So, um, but yeah, jokes aside, I'm in love with the sweater and yeah, with the yarn as well. So Shetland Welsh Mountain will launch with the September collection. Um, this will be the main batch. We will have a second batch in October, but that will be significantly smaller. Um, and I recommend being on time for this because the last times we had this, it was gone incredibly fast. And yeah, I also really, really, really recommend to, um, in general with all our yarns to think how much you might need for the project you have in mind because in the last week I think I had three requests only in one week for additional yarn where you know someone was running out of yarn and losing a game of yarn chicken and sometimes I was able to help actually because I somehow had a an archival skein of something lying around but that's really not the case usually especially with dyed colorways this is really not the case and I, I just wanted to stress that it's really important to check um, how much yarn you might need for a project because oftentimes uh, it's not possible to get an additional skein. So um, yeah, and especially with the black one, every spin is different because there are only so and so many fleeces available. So I cannot really, like if it's gone, it's gone. I cannot really provide you with additional yarn. So. So far about this launch, I really hope you're going to be ex excited about it as I am. Um, I don't know, I should maybe lose a few more words about the feel, because for me I'm not sensitive at all to wool. I can, as you see, I can wear this around my bare neck and not have any issues with it. But it is a little bit more rustic than our other bases, I would say. Not necessarily a lot more than Ovis, but in comparison to our other like garment yarns, um, this might be a touch more rustic, but in my opinion, on the completely like just normal woolly type of touch. So it's not necessarily super rustic. Um, but yeah, so much about that. And before I ramble even more, let me jump to the last section of this video. I think I said last, but it's best to last because I will do an outro. <laughs> but um yeah, the last section um, is all about my love for autumn again. And I kind of decided to not only launch a special, you know, yarn and have just the yarn available, but I also wanted to do something more community based. And therefore I decided to um, host a knit along um, that would be kind of a, about us getting ready for autumn and you know, getting ready for the colder months and getting our knits out. And this is going to be the ready for fall cow. And uh, it's going to be a knit along all about getting ready for the colder days. So there are not a ton of requirements. The Everybody's welcome. I'm going to moderate this in order to be a safe space for everyone. There's no harassment going to be tolerated or anything. Um, and I'm going to host this in a closed group on Slack, which is a, a platform that I used to use for my festive cast on and some other community projects where you can just sign up and, you know, share for free and everything. And they're going, they're going to be channels and, you know, we can kind of organize our chats in whip pictures and all kinds of different things. So I really enjoy using that platform. It's free, um, you only need to sign up for it. And I'm going to provi provide you with a sign up link as soon as possible. I just need to set up everything and then I'm going to add it to this video box as well. And other than that, I will, I will send the link through my newsletter next week. So if you haven't signed up, 
this is a good moment to do so. Um, but yeah, it will be a knit along all about what we can get ready for fall. And, you know, it's not necessarily only limited to accessories or such. I was really inspired to make shawls, which is what brings me to the what we prepared um, for the cow. Um, but you're welcome to uh, attend with any kind of projects you might want to do. However, the cow will only run for six weeks. So if you are going for a sweater project, it might be ambitious. But, you know, I guess also work in progress pictures will be fine for the price draw in the end. Speaking of price draw, there will be prices at the end and the cal will run from next week, the 27th of September until the 8th of November. Um, and then the price draw will be in the week after. I have to see when I will manage because that's going to be a very busy week already. Um, but I will make sure to make a price draw and there will be um, pattern prices in there. There will be yarny prices and also something special handmade by me so it's really worth to attend and everyone's welcome any kind of project is welcome as long as it's knitted in wool and twine yarns um and as said there will be a slack group for chatter and um yeah for everything so yeah i also want to thank all the designing participants in this because I have four designers who are part of this knit along whose designs I knitted as samples for you for inspiration so just in case you're not like you're not really in the mood yet the summer was kind of like knitting hibernation you don't really know what to cast on I prepared four um, samples of uh, shawls in different yarn bases as well and they're also going to be kits I know I don't do this very often, but I kind of wanted to make something really cozy that would also feel like wrapping up a little present for someone. So there will be yarn kits for all of these samples that I'm going to show to you. And with most of the designers, there will also be a discount for the pattern if you buy the kit. So you can get the pattern at a discounted price. Um, yeah, I'm going to also include something very, very special to the kits that will be there. But first of all, let me share what patterns will be in the knit along, starting with a true showstopper of a shawl. This one is the Johanna shawl by my dear friend Anja Heumann of Woolen Garden. And it's a blanket. I'm telling you, I try to not get burned, but <laughs> there is a candle behind me, so I have to be careful. But this is a proper, like, almost blanket of a shawl, and it's a stunning piece. I've been wanting to knit this for the longest time, <laughs> and it's a big garter section at the end, and then this absolutely beautiful cable section going down the whole shawl. And it's huge. It's like it's it's literally I, I can I don't know how to hold it, <laughs> so it's kind of visible. But it's absolutely beautiful. And we knitted this one in the BFR Romney um DK weight in its undyed shade, just to showcase the beautiful texture in the light undyed color. And yeah, this is the Johanna shawl, and it's just absolutely stunning in my eyes. I will wrap myself into this when I'm editing videos probably again, but yeah, it's so big and cozy and I just love it. So this one will be available in kit form and now let me show to you what will be with the kits. Um, because I wanted them to feel very special and um, you know, as much as I love autumn, I wanted it to be a really special uh, kit. And so I made stitch markers myself from dried, with dried flowers. And some of these flowers I even dried myself. So from plants that a friend of mine even grew. So it's super, super cool. And the kit that goes with um, the Johanna shawl is this one. It's so cute, isn't it? So these are real dried flowers in there. 
Oh, it's a bit hard to hold them up, but I hope you can see. So, and each kit has a different set. So here is like a wild carrot one. So cute, isn't it? And they will come in this little cardboard thingy and they are also just the right uh, markers for the for the pattern because you can have one stitch marker like the outer ones they are stitch markers to add to the pattern repeats and then there is a progress keeper uh, in the middle that you can use to track your progress and the findings are all in a, like a darker brass metal because I felt this looked very elegant with the teeny tiny petals <laughs> So yeah, this is the kit that goes with the Johanna shawl um, and I couldn't be happier with how everything turned out. I'll try to go through a little bit faster because this video is going to be very, very long, I feel. Um, but the next pattern I have here is also by a dear friend of mine and this is the Vechna shawl by my friend Jenny Anza of Koti Kotoni. And it's a masterpiece. I was honored to test knit this one a couple of months ago and kind of felt I needed to shine more light on it and I wanted it to be included in this knit along for the longest time. And so, yeah, this is the Vechna. It has this beautiful, reminds me of like a wildflower meadow, um, looks like grain stalks kind of pattern on it and it's just beautiful. I made this one in our BFL Romney 4 ply um, plus cloud silk mohair. This is the colorway linen which is kind of something between a beige and a rosy tone and I love this shawl. Like it's so pretty and I want to yeah wear it pretty much all of the time now that it's getting a little bit more chilly. Um, but yeah, the Vechner shawl is also going to be available in a kit form and it also has a corresponding stitch marker set. And this is the one for the Vechner. Let me show to you. Again, two little stitch markers. Oops, are you going to focus? Here we go. So two little stitch markers. And one progress keeper with a bit more of a beigey and purpley color play, picking up the shades of the yarn as well. So yeah, these are the markers for the Wechner shawl. And I love them. All of the sets are also finished with a little linen tie at the top because I just love how that looked. So yeah, this is the Wechner shawl set. So, next up we have another slightly smaller shawl. Don't worry, we don't only have the big blanket-like ones. This is also one that I wanted to make for the longest time and I worked on this one on my trip to um, Finland uh, in July, which was lovely. Um, and this one is the Sommernacht shawl by Evi Knitwear or Evgenia Dupli, if I'm saying this right. And it's a slightly smaller shawl. The color does not pick up very well. It's more of a mossy green that is kind of hard to show on camera, but it's very elegant, I believe, and very fresh and summery almost. So more like a late summer kind of piece for me. But yeah, this is the Sommernacht and it has this beautiful lace panel that goes through and then a lot of garter stitch. And it's knitted in our BFL Romney 4-ply um, and it only takes two skeins. So this is more of a smaller kit, um, but this is going to be available as well. And it also has a corresponding little set that I'm going to show to you now. So this is the set for the Sommernacht shawl. It has a big pink petal in the middle that almost looks like a tulip to me. And then these tiny little green plant 
people, friends, <laughs> that have been honestly quite tricky to place onto the base of the marker because they were so tiny and delicate. So, but this is the Sommernacht set. And lastly, we have another slightly smaller and a bit more simple in texture pattern. Um, this one is the Linear Shawl by Berger Caillot. And it's a really pretty geometrical kind of slip stitch pattern going through. And it's also more of a slightly smaller transitional shawl um, for the late summer days. So yeah, this is the linear shawl and it's um, very pretty, I think. It's knitted in our Woodlands for fly base and also only needs, I think, two or three skeins. I have to recall and double check, but I think it was two. Um, so also for a slightly more small set. And the set that comes with this one is the last one in the bunch. And it's this one. Sorry, the camera is having trouble to focus here, but yeah, this is a more neutral yellowy set with these tiny yellow beigey flowers and then the lily of the, of the valley ones in the middle. So yeah, this is the little set for the linear shawl. So as said, these will all be available in kit form and we will uh, make them available with the September collection. So yeah, I hope they will be something fun for a change and I hope that you will be happy to join the knit along. Um, as said, it will run from next week's Friday until uh, November 8th. Um, the ready for fall knit along and I'm going to make sure to send the sign up link for the slack group if you want to join and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Do you think we should also have a hashtag on Instagram? I'm not really experienced with uh, hosting cows, so let me know what you think in the comments and I can learn <laughs> But yeah, so far about the little community project. I hope I didn't forget anything if I did I'm going to write it down into the info box, but it was a lot of stuff to remember for today um, But yeah, I guess that is everything for today's video as said the September collection will launch next Friday, 8 p.m. CET, Central, Central European time. And that's when all of this that I just showed to you will be available. And um, this collection was very dear to my heart. It was a lot of enjoyable work, but a lot of work. <laughs> and I just hope you're ready to celebrate my favorite season, maybe yours too, with me. And have all these little specials. Um, all around our favorite season. So, so I guess without further ado, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and sticking to the end if you did. And I guess see you in the next one. Happy knitting. Bye.